Yo friends, so today we're going to look at three different methods for a dial laser to engrave on clear acrylic. I picked up some two millimeter generic stuff off of Amazon, no biggie. And we're going to compare the three common methods that are used. We have the old tried and true black paper method. We have chalk spray, which is very popular. And then we have my tried and true temper paint. Nothing special about this paint. It's kid's paint. You buy it on Amazon. You can go to buy it at the dollar store and whatnot. The question here is realistically, which one is best overall? All three methods do work, but there are drawbacks to using each of them. So for instance, with the temper paint, myself, I found it easiest to airbrush on. So you have to buy yourself a little $50 airbrush and put some coats on. Great. With our chalk paint here, its big deal is it makes a mess. Like seriously, it makes a serious mess. Way more than the airbrush, which is controlled. Um, it goes all over. And you know, a can of this is not exactly the cheapest thing in the world, especially compared to temper paint. And last but not least, like I said, this is black paper. Um, there's nothing special about this. This is black construction paper. Um, it's probably the oldest method of doing clear acrylic. Um, then we found better ways to do it, or what we believe the better ways to do it. So today we're going to answer what is realistically the best way to get quality results out of a diode laser on clear acrylic. Stick with me. Let's see, how did we do? So we have our chalk, our paper, and our temper paint. Now one of the things that you're gonna notice almost immediately is the color. The chalk has this kind of dingy brown looking thing, um, and so does the black paper, whereas the tempera, let's see if I can get a good shot of it, it's actually white-ish in color. So in terms of how did they perform with speed, let's take a look at our chalk. Now it looks like, yeah, it does pretty okay um, across the board. It gets kind of dim up there in the upper ranges. Um, you know, 6,000 millimeters a minute, 50% power, 60% power seems to be okay. It actually did a whole lot better with the grayscale down here at the bottom um, and low power. Um, likewise, 4,000 millimeters per second, 20% uh, power is probably the best looking one of the bunch. Now, if we go on to paper, you'll see we've got a much more vibrant look going on here. But we also have some extra damage. Because of the way the paper method works, we are going to induce some damage in areas if we, our power is too high and our speed is too low. But overall, I mean, it's like night and day difference between it and chalk paint. Right? Right. Now let's move on to the temper paint. Here you're gonna see we've got a really good set of vibrant colors across most of the range. Maybe not quite as well as the paper, um, but as you start getting up higher in speed, the better the tempera does. And realistically, do you wanna go slow? I mean, is that your intention to go as slow as you possibly can to get a good quality? Of course not. Um, you want to go as quickly as you can. Well, let's see, how did this actually do when it comes to doing a photo? So here's our chalk paint. Uh, detail is kind of okay, is pretty okay, but you know, it's rather dim. 
So all three of these were done at a similar speed and power, um, 6,000 millimeters a minute at 50% power, which seemed to be kind of in the same range. But chalk, it's kind of dim. So yeah, we'd probably need to lower our speed down significantly to get a better uh, looking image. That's probably the 4,000 millimeters per minute that we saw at about 20% power. Next up, we've got paper. Much more vibrant color here. Um, much better. Um, we do see one of the other problems with paper. These splotchy areas here, here, and here. This is due to the off-gassing when we burnt the paper. We can minimize this a bit by slowing down or be using reduced power um, and probably still get away with it, but it is inherent to the method that we're using. Lastly, we have the temper paint. Much, much better. I mean, the detail in that is significantly higher. Um, the color is really good, especially compared to the rest. And, you know, we can run this a whole lot faster than we can either of the other two methods. Now, for me, temper paint is the obvious winner. It's got the best clarity. I could run the fastest. It is arguably the cheapest compared to the construction paper. Um, over the long term, you know, a gallon of that stuff is going to be a whole lot less than a pack of black paper, um, even if you're shopping at the dollar store. So one thing I want to touch on last is there's a big push and teasing by the CO2 owners that say, hey, you know, you guys suck uh, with your diode lasers. You can't do anywhere near as good. So is there any truth to that? Well, let's find out. I ran the same image on one of my CO2 machines and let's take a look. Um, you know, there is a whole lot brighter color there. Um, we've lost a lot of detail and I honestly didn't dial this in at all. I just threw it in and said, go. But you kind of get the idea of the difference between CO2 and diode. The diode is going to give you a whole lot better clarity, uh, especially if you're doing high detailed images. It's not going to give you the same level of brightness though. Um, what This is really obvious when you look at them like this. If it's just sitting there, the CO2 is definitely way, way lighter and gives you a whole lot more color when it just sits there. But comparable when it's in, you know, in an actual holder and it's actual in use, the diode isn't honestly too bad in my opinion, um, as you know, comparatively. Um, and the extra detail, if that's what you're going for, which that is what I go for, um, the basic stuff doesn't really impress me too much, um, but there you have it. So if you're thinking about which way to actually do these and you don't have a CO2 and you're just gonna use your diode, for me, Temper Paint is the winner. Thanks for watching.